Glade was my ace in our most recent tournament and I chose it due to the buff it received this generation with the introduction to a new ability in sharpness. So in today's TVI Tales, I'm going to cut back a little and talk about Glade itself. Glade has been a relevant Pokemon for playthroughs and team building since generation four, especially being associated with the ever popular Gardevoir. It's definitely a great choice to use for a fighting or psychic type slot on your team. And as we enter into generation nine, I wonder if Glade will rise in popularity once more. The Blade Pokemon Glade has an impressive attack stat of 125 and could take special attacks quite nicely with its 115 special defense. Give this thing an assault vest or focus more on its attack and you're looking at a Pokemon that can get a few knockouts in during a game. However, with an average speed of 80, you'll really have to rely on Tailwind or a Choice Scarf if you have a chance to go first. Or if you want to take the unusual route, you can always minimize its speed with a brave nature and run it in a Trick Room. Trick Room is a possibility due to its psychic typing and paired with fighting means you're only really worried about flying, ghost and fairy types. Seeing how a lot of flying, ghost and fairy moves are special attacks anyway, you really do get to take advantage of that high special defense I mentioned earlier and the combination of fighting and psychic has great interaction with psychic bug and dark cancelling out additional weaknesses. Bringing us back to the sharpness ability, it's definitely a great addition to Glade's arsenal as moves such as Psycho Cut and Sacred Sword get boosted by 50% in addition to the stab boost effectively making these moves do double damage to any Pokemon and will usually result in a knockout if the opponent is a rock, steel, normal, ice, dark, fighting or poison type. Other moves that take advantage of sharpness include Aerial Ace, Aqua Cutter, Leaf Blade, Night Slash and X Scissor effectively giving Gallade the option for stab flying, water, grass, dark and bug type moves and essentially gives you a super effective boost hit against nearly every type. This is incredible to do so much additional damage to Pokemon that may resist fighting or psychic and allows so much more versatility in move options for those matchups you feel Gallade may struggle in. However, if you're feeling a little old school or feel like sharpness is a little blunt, then you can still rely on its other abilities. Steadfast allows you to increase your speed for free on those fake out turns, which seriously helps out its average 80 speed. Or if you can work it into a team, then Justified is brilliant for really maxing out that 125 attack stat, especially if you wanted to run something like self beat up or brutal swing. The role you want Galade to run is primarily attack orientated, and if you're not going to take advantage of sharpness as well as the aforementioned moves, then I'd suggest investing in powerful moves such as the ones on screen, like Close Combat, Poison Jab, Zen Headbutt and Knock Off. However, if you did want to run it as more of a support option, then there's no harm in maxing out defenses and using moves such as Swords Dance, Taunt, Trick Room and Will-O-Wisp. As for the tournament, while I was restricted in my Terrestrialization option as Psychic, I did find that it was really offensive doing great damage with Psycho Cut, especially paired with my Ndidi Psychic Terrain. However, for a more defensive option, I'd have to recommend Normal. You become completely immune to oncoming super effective ghost moves, as well as only being weak to fighting, which your Psychic type moves can deal with. Additionally, Slash is also an option to run, which is boosted by sharpness, as well as now your normal terror typing boosting it. This is how I'd run Gallade in singles. Choice Scarf and Sharpness to do either great damage early on, or wrap up a prolonged game once health is looking low. Terra Psychic eliminates my weakness to Fairy and Flying, while providing powerful Psycho Cuts. Sacred Sword and Leaf Blade are there for incredible coverage, especially paired with sharpness, and Knock Off is always nice, but feel free to experiment with other moves if you're worried about particular matchups. Stat-wise, I've maxed out the attack with an adamant nature and invested just enough speed to outspeed nearly every Pokemon in the format that don't have a beneficial speed nature. The rest I've put into special defense to allow for greater survivability against powerful special attacks. For doubles, I've given Gallade the Life Orb just for additional damage output while retaining the sharpness ability. However, depending on your team or their team, Steadfast and Justified are also brilliant. Normal terror typing to avoid the big ghost hits while baiting opponents fighting types to fall victim to Psycho Cut. Protect and Will-O-Wisp are here to burn both physical attackers and turns if you need to stall. While Sacred Sword can easily be swapped out for any move you feel works better for your team. Adamant max attack again to complement the life orb, but since we can rely on partner Pokemon for Tailwind or Trick Room, the rest of the stats can go into special defense. If we are worried about physical threats, then Intimidator can help out, as well as Will-O-Wisp. On screen here, my Glade was able to one-shot a Cyclozar, as well as taking out an Ndidi at negative one attack, all thanks to boosted Sacred Sword. It was capable of surviving three turns of sleep and endured two powerful special attacks thanks to my terrestrialization and special defense investment. In other games, I've been utilizing moves such as Psycho Cut, Leaf Blade, and even Aerial Ace to great success. In summary, I would highly recommend using Gallade as a niche option to fill in a fighting or psychic slot. Incredible attack and special defense is already a given for any team, and it has three pretty impressive abilities to command in battle. Until next time, I've been TVI Tornado, and I'll be bringing more insight to underappreciated Pokemon in future videos, so make sure to stick around until then.